Good evening. I'm Derek T. Dingle, Chief Content Officer for Black Enterprise. Thanks for joining us for our next panel, Drafting a Real Plan for Black Corporate Advancement. In order to build a diverse senior leadership team for the future, corporations today must develop an intentional recruitment, retention, and elevation agenda for Black executive talent. To guide corporations on how to effectively design such initiatives, we have assembled a stellar panel to dissect the current state of DEI and make recommendations on a plan to position Black professionals for long-term advancement within their organizations. To fully explore this issue, I have with me today Celeste Warren, Vice President, Global Diversity and Inclusion Center for Excellence at Merck. She's also the author of the recently released book, How to Be a Diversity and Inclusion Ambassador, Everyone's Role in Helping All Feel Accepted, Engaged, and Valued. Dominic Shelton Leipzig, a partner at Mayor Brown and a member of its cybersecurity and data privacy practice. She is also co-founder and co-CEO of Nextwork, a nonprofit dedicated to diversifying the C-suite and the boardroom. And Charles Chapman, manager multicultural marketing for GM and a future leader of the Black Executive CMO Alliance Playbook Program. Celeste, Dominique, Charles, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank Happy you for having us. Thank you. Uh, this session is um, extremely vital for our summit because we're going to explore what can be done to increase the ranks of the C-suite among Black talent. But to start, I want um, our audience to get a sense of your roles within your organizations. And I'm gonna start with you first, Celeste, in terms of sharing your role at Merck, and then Dominique, and then Charles, uh, please um, tell us um, your, your positions and, and, and what you do at um, your respective uh, firms. Sure, Derek. I lead Merck's Global Diversity and Inclusion Center of Excellence, and it's responsible for the enterprise-wide diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives across the organization. Uh, Dominique? Thank you, Derek, and I'm so glad to be here. I am a privacy and cybersecurity partner at Mayor Brown, and during the pandemic, I co-founded a nonprofit called Nextwork, and the purpose of that organization is to diversify the C-suite and boardrooms across America. Okay. Uh, Charles? Thank you, Derek. Uh, I am the multicultural marketing manager at General Motors, responsible for brand agnostic approaches to gaining cultural capital for our family of brands. Okay, we have the perfect uh, panel assembled to uh, you know further the discussion about you know uh, advancement, uh, black advancement, and and drafting this uh, this plan to to meet that um, agenda. Uh, what I want all of you to do right now is it's been two years since we had uh, discussion of the the announcements of the corporate commitments to diversity and inclusion to eradicating systemic barriers to access to opportunities. And I want you, each of you, to give your assessment of where we are and how those two years have fared and, and whether they've been impactful or whether they haven't met the mark. And Charles, uh, I'll start with you and then um, we'll, we'll hear from Dominique and Celeste. Thanks, Derek. Uh, yes, I think the theme that I saw um, is the authenticity. Uh, I think that there are a, lo a number of brands that have authentically uh, made responses and that have uh, showed up uh, in terms of uh, their commitment to DE&I. But uh, what, I, what I do still question is the consistency. So it's only been a few years and I think brands have to remain consistent in order to uh, really uh, connect with the communities. So Dominique, what, what are your impressions of the last two years and how these corporate commitments have impacted uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion? And has there been any forward movement on the uh, senior management front as it relates to African-Americans? 
Yeah, well, thank you, Derek. I think this has been such an exciting time because we have an opportunity, sort of an opening where, uh, as, as Charles was alluding to, where we really have uh, corporate America coming forward and making commitments to diversify the boardroom and the C-suite. And we've seen strides being made in the boardroom in terms of appointments. But what's so critical here is that we continue that growth, particularly as it relates to uh, African-American appointments to the CEO and C-suite roles. And that's a big part of the reason I started Next Work, so that you have uh, just not just a moment in time, but a progression that continues over the years to where we reach a diversified C-suite and boardroom. But um, I'm going to um, follow up on that. Right now, the, the figures that we've received, uh, that we've seen on in our research is that 3.2% uh, of Blacks represent senior management within major corporations, and then another 1%, um, or less than 1% actually, are CEOs um, in these same companies. Um, why are we still seeing such a dearth of you know, senior management as it relates to um, African Americans? Well, we have to, you know, I, I look at what has been successful and you look at what has been done by the CEO of Lowe's and others looking beyond, uh, say, who has normally been in succession to look at the talent within your own corporation and lift that talent into strategic discussions that are critical to the enterprise so that you can begin that meaningful engagement that is so critical to lead to the elevation. Uh, what we have seen, uh, Derek, is, and we were talking about this in prep, where we've seen a rise in the number of appointments of African-American board members and a reduction in the number of African-American CEOs in uh, public companies. And we have to, and we can be better than this. And I'm really excited about this conversation that we're having right now now, because there's so much that can be done uh, just looking at your own uh, senior ranks to see who has not been brought into discussions uh, who is African-American or diverse background and begin that process of including them in strategic, important, enterprise-wide discussions that are critical to the enterprise. So uh, what we've seen too much of uh, perhaps is the diversity discussion happening in one end and the, uh, the strategy discussions happening in another end of an enterprise. And we need to merge those discussions together. Well, as uh, Dominique, as you, as you said, we are seeing this um, paradox in terms of board um, representation growing. In fact, we recently released our um, uh, 2022 report on uh, board diversity, boardroom diversity, and the S&P 500 uh, companies are now at 85% representation in terms of African-Americans when just in 2019, it was at 60%. So we have seen an increase in corporations stepping up to the plate, but uh, in the same regard, we, we've seen a, you know, a reduction in terms of the area are a, stas a stasis as it relates to uh, the C-suite. So that leads me to turn to um, Celeste in terms of Merck and your role in terms of bolstering the, uh, the C-suite position. This has been a focus of Merck for years, especially under the leadership of uh, you know, Ken Frazier prior to his retirement. Absolutely. And, you know, it's not an easy road. It's not an easy journey. But uh, under starting with Ken under his leadership and continuing with Rob Davis, our current CEO, we've had an emphasis on especially black and brown leadership and accelerating that advancement into the C-suite. We've had to really focus. And that meant starting with the board and starting then with the CEO and his direct reports, making sure that they understood why we needed to do that. So we started sharing trending data to show the advancement that we've had over decades with women and the advancement we've had with our Pan-Asian colleagues, but we haven't seen what we've wanted to see within the black and brown communities. And so we set um, a communications uh, strategy together and also work that needed to be done across the talent processes from the standpoint of 
talent acquisition. So how are we recruiting uh, into the organization those black and brown and diverse senior executives? And then how are we accelerating the advancement within our organization to make sure that we're providing those opportunities for those critical roles in the future? And with that focus and that concentration, we have been able to advance it. And we made a commitment, um, not just to the senior leader uh, of the company, but also to the board and also externally as well through our ESG progress report and being transparent about our aspirational goal in wanting to increase female representation at our executive levels, uh, 40% to 40%. And then for Latino and Hispanic, we want to get to 10%. And for our Black and African American, we want to get to 10%. So that was communicated. We wanted to be transparent about it. And we are, you know, there's, there's struggles and there's opportunities. And we continue to keep pushing forward as long as it stays in the forefront and people view it as a part of the priorities for the organization, their personal priorities, then we're going to be able to, I believe, be able to reach that aspirational goal. Well, as part of this uh, panel, or the focus of this panel is to draft this plan for the advancement of, uh, for Black corporate advancement. And part of that is seeking and gaining um, advisors, uh, tapping into, uh, you know, corporate personnel that may not be at the management level or can advise the management level. Share with us how the employee resource group Black employee resource groups, uh, ERGs, play a role in, you know, advancing, you know, African Americans within the corporation and eventually uh, to um, taking sweet C-suite positions or being positioned to take C-suite positions. Well, that's one thing that I am absolutely proud of, the work that our employee resource groups have done throughout our corporation. Our oldest and longest established ERG is our League of Employees of African Descent, and it's global in nature. But they have played such a significant role in talent acquisition and development of their members. They conduct leadership summits each year. They have lunch and learns. They have senior executives that come in and speak to their members. And all of these activities help us to really develop the black talent within our organization. They also play a critical role with senior leaders in helping them to be more inclusive leaders, helping them to understand the challenges that exist with some of our employees of color and really bridging that gap and, and helping them to, to just lead authentically. And they have, senior leaders have tapped on our leaders of our employees, employee resource groups, especially LEAD or League of Employees of African Descent, to help them, especially two years ago during the murder of George Floyd, and all of the um, all of the, uh, the the what happened afterwards. Many of our senior leaders were feeling, I don't know how to reach out to my black employees. I don't know what I should do, and they tapped on the experience of our uh, chapter leaders and our global leaders within that ERG to help them, to coach and to counsel them, to have authentic discussions, to, to really bring their own awareness to a point where they're not constantly asking uh, our African-American employees, well, what do I do about this and what do I do about that? But, but you know, teaching and counseling them that you need to first take the first step and educate yourself and then go and have an intelligent conversation with your colleagues. So they have just played an, an instrumental role and they've gotten a lot of exposure because when you think about the chapter leads and the global leads, they're managing and working with groups of employees that are larger than some of the organizations of our senior vice presidents and vice presidents. And so that is valuable experience that they're getting to help advance and accelerate their development. So they're already leading. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, so Charles, um, share with me at GM uh, or, or in your journey, some of the challenges that you faced. And then now you're also a member of BECA uh, and that's the Black Executive CMO Alliance. And you have been designated a future leader. And share with us what a future leader is and how that positions you for C-suite positions and advising corporations 
to have intentional programs to put African Americans on the track for C suite positions. Thanks for that, Derek. Yes. And at General Motors, we have the aspiration of being the most inclusive company in the world. And how I think General Motors is putting that in practice and me sitting within this diversity marketing team, the Becca program has been absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal for this. It's the Black Executive CMO Alliance. It is a group of CMOs that are pulling, uh, pulling forward uh, middle level management. Uh, it's led by Jerry DeVard. And this program has absolutely had a positive impact on my career tra trajectory. Uh, I'm very proud to be a part of the 2021 class of future leaders of about 40 uh, uh, mid-level mid management uh, from across the uh, multiple industries. And this Becca really brings together these marketing C-suite executives who, you know, who have taken time out of their day to lift, lift forward uh, uh, potential, uh, you know, potential uh, management and leadership. I'm currently a part of this inaugural class. I had the opportunity uh, this year uh, to, to, to travel to Cannes in France as a part of uh, this Becca leadership uh, group and present on the main stage. And what I will say is that, you know, GM making this investment in, in my career and identifying me as someone that has that promise has just rejuvenated me. You know, I've recently been promoted uh, within GM. I've watched, it, I've watched firsthand uh, a lot of the uh, the advancements that have been made uh, back in 2020 when Mary Barra, our CEO, came out um, and, you know, made very bold statements, very bold commitments, whether that was uh, from a, a media investment standpoint. And it's really my job sitting within diversity marketing to ensure that we are moving forward in those goals and inspecting what you expect is uh, something that I always like to say is because you have to also measure it. So, um, so as part of you know what we're doing with our within our team, um, you know, it, it is uh, very important. And I think the the road uh, and what we're accomplishing through Becca is is phenomenal. And I certainly encourage. Uh, we talked a lot about uh, the internal things that a company can do, but when I look at the Becca program, this is an external uh, opportunity. And I know Next Work and what Dominique is doing there is another great example example of an external resource that companies can tap into. Uh, so, you know, I think that this is a great step and I'm looking forward to passing the baton to the next future leaders group and continue and ensuring that GM continues to put future leaders into this program. Uh, before I talk to Dominique about next work, um, Charles, uh, tell us, um, you know, how you have positioned yourself and the, the mentorship and the sponsorship that's been part of your career. You know, congratulations on your, your um, um, promotion, but I want to get a sense from you personally and professionally how that came about. Was it, you know, obviously hard work, but share with us how the corporation had supported your growth and development or identify executives who have helped support your growth and development as you uh, move up the uh, corporate ladder. Oh, that's great. And as a part of my interview for my promotion, you know, I decided to reach out to some black leadership within our company. And I was so pleasantly surprised at how inviting they were um, to me. You know, there's, you know, one executive, um, you know, really took six, we had about six sessions preparing me for uh, this interview process. And he did not know me before I reached out. So that's why I always encourage, uh, you know, folks within organizations, black young professionals to reach out, to network, because I would have not, never known that this executive would have taken so much time and poured it into me. And it wasn't just him. I reached out to multiple executives and that was something my mentor, you know, uh, recommended that I do. And I'm so excited that I did. And what that has done to me is it also is, is, is encouraged me and makes me feel like I'm obligated to do the same to other folks within this organization. So that's something that I think has gone very well with, with GM. As we've already referenced a lot of the employee resource groups, that has been a phenomenal resource for myself as well, the GM, uh, GM African Ancestry Network, we call it affectionately G-Man, uh, has been a great uh, a tool of resources there with access to executives and leaders that are making that, you know, vested interest in growing that pipeline of diverse talent at General Motors. Okay. Uh, Dominique, um, you know, you, you, you shared with us um, you, your, your co-founding of Nextwork, the importance of Nextwork in terms of moving the needle in terms of uh, diversity and inclusion, especially at the C-suite and boardroom level. Can you um, delve a bit deeper on 
how Nextwork works with corporations specifically in terms of developing their programs or creating pathways to um, uh, for um, Black executives to uh, achieve those um, C-suite positions and, and get into the boardroom. Thank you so much, Derek. And first of all, it's just it's so thrilling to hear all that Charles was talking about and Celeste and all that they are achieving and doing on this initiative. Taking a step back, what we are seeing uh, exchanges around the globe, uh, investors around the globe that are controlling trillions of investment, uh, also regulators around the world are looking to see diversity in senior management as well as on the board. So uh, companies have this uh, in a, you know, sort of storm clouds brewing in addition to the wonderful uh, commitments that were made after the murder of George Floyd. There's also a, a, a large ESG, it's less talked about the ESG piece, a large social component of diversifying the board and the C-suite in order to meet uh, stakeholders, employees, customers, around the world for a global company. So with that, what Nextwork is doing is actually, uh, and, and this goes to the key where I think we're gonna be successful in all of these collective efforts, is, in, is facilitating meaningful engagement. In other words, uh, just as Charles talked about reaching out and up towards other senior leaders for that mentoring, there are many senior leaders and board members around the globe in uh, global companies looking to diversify and they lack the, the network and we call it next work in order to do that. They need the next level of leadership in the black, brown and diverse community, women, et cetera, to be able to have the boardroom of what is expected uh, today, but is really gonna be the boardroom and C-suite of tomorrow. So how do we start that with next work? What we do is we engage, we, we facilitate meaningful engagement. We want C-suite and uh, board member folks uh, around the globe and global companies to meet uh, diverse Black, Brown, diverse women in their positions of power, in their sweet spot, what they know, and share and engage on those issues that are strategic, whether that be uh, crypto and blockchain, or in my case, cybersecurity, privacy, or employment, or finance, or healthcare. There are talented professionals uh, that are within the ranks of many organizations already. And if they don't have those folks already to groom and to uh, mentor into leadership positions in the C-suite, then that's where an organization like Nextwork and Becca and others that we talked about extending tentacles outside of your organization to draw in a, a, a broader network to be able to engage with other executives on ideas. And uh, just taking a step back when we reverse engineered at Nextwork, how is how it was that the members of the organization who are all diverse um, have always had diverse teams as long as we have been able to lead teams, which for many of us is decades, uh, in my case, um, about 25 years, and never been an issue to have diversity because uh, the mentees literally come forward, raising their hands with enthusiasm, as Charles uh, talked about, reaching out for to work with that diverse executive. So uh, first order of business is diversify your C-suite ranks. The mentees and others, that pipeline will be able to, uh, in many respects, uh, take care of itself when you have a leader in role handling a, a, a chunk of strategy for the organization. Uh, and that can work collaboratively with everything else that's going on DE&I, but there must be a, a strategic tranche of the organization turned over to a diverse individual. That is the best way to visualize and see. And uh, the, the last thing I'll say is I was, I was just talking to an African-American board member at a major a Fortune 100 company. And I'm going to borrow a phrase that she talked about in terms of the importance of diversifying both the C-suite and the boardroom. Uh, what we want to avoid is an hourglass where we are loading up on appointing folks in board positions and those board positions either term out or get refreshed. And 
the organization looks around and says, we would like a CEO to fill that next seat, a former CEO. And our ranks are so thin as far as uh, the black CEOs that we're not able to do that. So we must uh, both diversify the board and the C-suite at the same time to create a pipeline of change and growth uh, for our global economy. Yeah, and then also to um, to drive organizational uh, innovation. You know, you you need those uh, diverse in, uh, executives to bring new perspectives, new ideas, uh, to look at new technologies that's going to ultimately uh, bolster uh, the, the the performance of these uh, corporations and provide and in, create in, in fact new opportunities within those organizations. So, um, please. I was just going to say one thing. Uh, there was a great report that uh, we can make available to folks that uh, one of the financial institutions uh, just did, I believe it was City, that just reported on the revenue that is generated through diverse teams. So your point about innovation, growth, and also reaching markets uh, is so critical to have that uh, diverse in the diversity in the strategy and in the C-suite and boardroom. Uh, Celeste, um, in terms of talking about diverse teams, and in terms of talking about young professionals, the ELC Institute did a recent study, um, and it was based on the Great Recession and this, uh, you know, this whole trend of quiet quitting. And uh, now, you know, they found that 16% of the young black executives that they um, surveyed, you know, resigned from their position, left corporate America. You know, and it was a signal that there's been a real retention problem. They left because they were frustrated due to lack of opportunities, frustrated because they had problems with management. So my question is, what do you do to engage and retain um, millennials, Gen Z? Because when you're talking about the C-suite and when you're talking ultimately about boardroom positions, you have to have that pipeline and you have to engage young people in order to create that pipeline. So what can be done and, and what is Merck doing specifically or some examples that you've seen in terms of dealing with this really major problem of this uh, talent drain? Oh, that is a key. That is very much the key. Understanding this generation, Generation Y, Generation Z, and not just congregationally, the whole generation, but understanding how being a part of that generation and also being Black, how that impacts them and how they view the work environment is different from maybe how we viewed it as we were coming up in our careers. They're all about how can you develop me? Are you giving me consistent feedback? How is this a partnership where you're helping me to reach my aspirational goals from a career perspective and also a development perspective? And it's very different from the baby boomers in Generation X um, from the standpoint of, you know what, just I'll figure it out, leave me alone. <laughs> that type of mentality where with this generation, we have to be very mindful of the fact that they want the feedback. They want constructive feedback as well as positive, And they want you to partner with them in helping them to develop and reach their career aspirations. And, you know, what's so interesting is, you know, when we were coming up, it was, okay, you spend five years in this job and five years in that job and three years in this job, and you'll be able to, to get to you know, uh, the levels that you wanna get to. Well, that doesn't work for this generation. And so we have to find out how we can meet the needs from a career aspiration, because if we don't, they will just leave the organization and they will pursue their, op their opportunities in other organizations or in other ways. And so one of the things that we try to do is to acknowledge that, understand that we have our next gen network employee business resource group that really helps us to bridge the gap between what we need to be doing, how we need to be leading, what our people processes need to be, our talent management processes need to be to help to build that 
generation and help guide them through their careers. And we learn from them as well. They are not going to sit around and, and listen to the, to the old adages of the other generations around. You got to pay your dues. And they respect that. They honestly do. They know that. But it's not measured in years but it's measured in experiences and what experiences do they need? What skills and capabilities do they need to develop? And just because it took you five years or 10 years doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to take them that long to develop skills and capabilities. They're, they're highly intelligent. They're, they're quick. You know, they are able to, to take information in and really leverage it and use it and, and then turn around and say, okay, how do I innovate on this? Take it to the next level. In, in what I'm doing in my job. So it's a very strong generation. So that's one of the things we do as far as working with the, that particular uh, resource group. And then a second thing to, that's really specific to black and brown uh, in that employees in that generation, we created a program called the Diverse Leaders Acceleration Program, and we call it DLAP. And it's basically for that generation, early, early, early in their careers, and they didn't have an opportunity to participate in another program that we had that was an acceleration program because that program involved um, moving to different parts of the world, gaining experiences from that perspective. And because of the some of the social and economic positions that some of our colleagues were in, they didn't have the luxury of being able to just lift up and move to France or move to different places. And so, um, what we did was we created this program and allowed for that same understanding and knowledge and them able to get those experiences in the company, but doing it where they were. And we're in a remote and a virtual world. And so we believe that ha leveraging that, that virtual world to gain experiences and help them along their careers was really, really important. And so that was another thing that we do. We created this program and, um, it has been just phenomenal. We had over hundreds and hundreds of our colleagues from the generation early career to bid on this program and, and try to join this program. And for the pilot, we only wanted it to be small because we wanted to, to get it right. And so we only accepted about 20 in the first cohort. But um, it has just been amazing. And we just we just um, have gone through that cohort and they they are just excited about the opportunities that they have and they're so energetic and we're just really, really excited about the promise and the potential that these young people have to really help us to drive our organizations in the future. Well, Celeste, I want to share that uh, question with both Charles and Dominique that goes to that point because so often, and, and this has been traditional with corporations, identifying, and even in some cases, seemingly anointing, you know, future leaders, you know, and, and why hasn't this happened with diverse um, employees? In fact, some companies look at interns and say, I really believe that this individual is going to be a future leader. And how can companies be intentional, uh, Charles, in doing what Celeste is doing and making sure that we move these diverse um, uh, entry-level employees and position them for management and then eventually for leadership within these companies. Well, this is definitely a point I wanted to address when it comes to uh, the, the internship programs. Um, this is something that I'm very proud of General Motors and what we've done, uh, really focusing on the HBCU uh, segments. Um, Chevrolet uh, has a program that's been around for seven years. It's called Chevrolet Discover the Unexpected. It's a program that I have the honor of running uh, within GM. Um, it, as I mentioned, it's been around for seven years. Over those seven years, we've run through about, we've brought in about 50 students uh, from the most multiple HBCUs across the globe on a uh, on a marketing or journalism fellowship. Uh, within this uh, program, they we've awarded over $600,000 in scholarships and stipends. Uh, we have brought in a number of students for full-time employment. And I think in our department has made it a conscious effort to ensure that those promising students that do a phenomenal job, if they're a sophomore, they come back for their junior year. If they're a senior, you know, we're, you know, actively finding ways 
to bring them into the organization, whether that's, you know, you know, whether that's in our DM, DMIT program, whether that's a marketing coordinator. So this program has been phenomenal. It is in partnership with the NNPA, so the National Newspaper Publishers Association, um, who we've had a partnership with for over 50 years. So um, with the journalism, so we take that journalism arm where they work with the publishers, they write stories on, uh, and this past year, they really focused on our electric vehicles. So, you know, the, the, the change to that and the adoption and that, you know, the, the education that our community needs on electric vehicles. So this program has been a phenomenal way. This is not the only one we do within GM, but one that has been around, has gained some equity within uh, the, the community. Um, and we look to continue to build on that program every year. Um, last year was the first year where we doubled the amount of students we brought in. Uh, we are looking, you know, post pandemic to really take this back as a road show. We used to uh, we used to have these uh, interns drive around in a Chevrolet vehicle from different town to town uh, and meet with these publishers and you know write these articles and we've expanded it to include marketing. So our Chevrolet brand marketing team has welcomed in HBCU students and really championed their cause. Uh, we just had the closing ceremony and sent them back to school back in August. Uh, it's just a phenomenal program to be a part of. Um, we stay in touch. We have an alumni group where we stay in touch with these internships, uh, intern uh, students, and ensure that uh, that we are helping and developing them. I went into my LinkedIn today and had a uh, message from one of the interns. just like, hey, Charles, just staying in touch with you, seeing how things are going. So that just really, really makes me happy. It makes me proud to work for GM, and it makes me want to continue to do more. So programs like this, I think, are very important. Um, hearing uh, what Celeste is doing there at, at Merck and some of those great programs, that is inspiring as well. And then we're always looking for ways, as I mentioned, to expand and, and grow. Uh, um, and, you know, my passion is there, you know, being a, a Black man and understanding the challenges that I, I face to get where I'm I am and and beyond. So um, so it's about that pulling forward um, with these students, and we'll continue to do more uh, uh, along the road. So, okay. Well, we're going to wrap up soon, but I don't want to want us to end the session without getting Dominique's view on how we how these companies can be intentional in terms of moving people up the the ladder from the internship ranks or entry level ranks to eventually management. And um, Dominique, I'm gonna also ask you to talk about how do you cultivate uh, young professionals to start looking at board positions since that's a large part of your work with uh, NextWork. Yeah, so thank you so much, Derek. So, you know, we also developed a curriculum for, first of all, it's exciting to hear what Celeste and Charles talked about, that are, all the things that are going on at Merck and GM and to take that at scale and replicate that uh, throughout the Fortune 500 and s and it's also going to require, uh, we, we started a curriculum called Be Diverse. And one of those things includes identifying diverse, uh, diverse uh, putative leaders with, with uh, skills that show promise, and then ensuring that we are getting the proper training to non-diverse uh, senior leadership to understand meaningful engagement and in inter interface with these young leaders so that they can identify their talent and work with them. So um, part of this is really being able to have, take the enthusiasm and all of the promise and energy and brilliance that our young people bring to corporate, the corporate environment, the second they walk in. And then as Celeste and Charles were talking about nurture that, uh, through not only the diverse uh, folks who are uh, in those enterprises, but ensuring that the non-diverse folks understand how to meaningful, meaningfully engage. And that means uh, understanding the talent and, and, and maybe uh, I, I, for my law firm, uh, Mayor Brown, I do lead our global data innovation team. And sometimes our uh, newest lawyers are the ones that have the most innovative ideas on technology that are gonna impact the client. So really listening to those young people and then giving them a platform to uh, be able to teach others, run a seminar, other, other things to raise their visibility in the environment is really key so that they can be noticed and moved along to leadership. Uh, so really what NextWork is focused on is cross-pollinating to ensure that what is happening at the um, 
within the groups and the very various affinity groups and programs that that's taken at scale. So uh, C-suite and boardroom folks understand uh, who those young leaders are and, and interface and meet with them so that they can follow their careers and be a resource for them on issues, whatever's critical. I mean, uh, Charles was talking about connected vehicles for GM, uh, whatever's critical to the enterprise, if it's claims that, that, that they they know the diverse folks uh, that are coming through the ranks who really know the next innovations in planes. In other words, really ensuring that that's, uh, the knowledge that is coming up through the ranks is uh, protected and also exposed to senior leadership in a way that can position that young mentee for leadership. And that's uh, something that we put into a curriculum called Be Diverse. And we're happy to share that uh, with, with any uh, non-diverse senior leadership that really wanna know how to identify the talent that's right in their midst. And they may not even be aware of the programs that are happening um, at each of these levels. Well, that's been just great. Um, you know, in closing, you know, and, and listening to all of you, you know, you, you've come up with, you know, the planks of the plan, which is intention, accountability, continued advocacy, mentorship, cultivation of talent. And uh, we're going to share that with obviously the Black Enterprise audience and with corporate America so that we can continue to create pathways for um, African-American executives to reach the C-suite and the boardroom level. Um, Dominique, Charles, Celeste, thank you so much for joining us and being part of this, uh, uh, among the architects of this plan for Black corporate advancement. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for tonight's C-Suite Boardroom Equity Summit, brought to you by Black Enterprise, the number one Black digital media brand with more than 12 million unique visitors per month. I hope you found our content to be informative, relevant, and actionable. As such, I would like to thank our amazing group of speakers, business leaders, and corporate veterans who shared valuable insights and success strategies as part of their dynamic presentations. I would also like to recognize and extend our deep appreciation to our sponsors, Hasbro, Hyatt, Manulife John Hancock, Merck, and Nationwide for making their investment in tonight's summit. You've been an outstanding audience. Your engagement and participation proved critical to making this event a smashing success. If you missed or would like to replay any session, you can gain on-demand access to all summit content on blackenterprise.com. Also, for more information on Black corporate leaders in corporate governance, watch our upcoming video series, Boardroom Chats, presented by Nationwide. And don't miss our 2022 Boardroom Power Report, which will feature the BE Registry of Corporate Directors, our exclusive listing of Black board members of S&P 500 companies. You'll be able to find both on blackenterprise.com. Lastly, be on the lookout for the all new in-person Black Men Excel Summit sponsored by FedEx at Gaylord National Resort in National Harbor, Maryland on October 12th through the 14th. And our powerhouse virtual summits, Sisters Inc. on November 4th and 40 Under 40 on December 8th, both can be found on blackenterprise.com and our array of social media channels. So in closing, continued success with your professional and career pursuits.